This podcast is sponsored by Lightens. Lightens, your best source for OE quality automotive and heavy duty accessory drive tensioning devices. We know tensioners because we invented them. Vans, welcome to AMN Drive Time. It's great to see you. Great to see you, Bill. It was great to see you in Vegas at the trade show. Yeah, you guys have a good week out there? I think we had a great week. I think it was nice to see people, and uh, and I think the people that were there were ready to do business. Agreed. I thought it was a great week as well. So, Vange, you've had a pretty remarkable career, having started out as a tech and shop owner to eventually become CEO of, of your privately held family business. I think it'd be great for me and the AMN audience to have you walk us through your story from tech shop owner to CEO of your private business. Great. Um, you know, it, it has been a very, a very good uh, career. And, uh, you know, in many respects, never worked for anybody. So, uh, very minimal, uh, you know, I came out of high school and basically uh, me and my brother started a, um, in the gas station business. Back when Jimmy Carter was president and the gas shortages were in effect. So um, we really didn't sell a lot of gas. So we became uh, auto repair, 24 hour towing. And uh, we basically did that for many years. And after that, we, um, we turned the auto repair business into a specialty muffler shop. And uh, over a 10 year period, uh, we grew that to about 20 shops, 21, I think it was. And there were muffler shops and, um, you know, it was, it, was, uh, it was a way of having Sundays off and nights off because in the towing and repair business, during the winter was 24 seven. So that was good. And um, after that, we um, got in, in the muffler shop business. We, um, the EPA loss had come in for aftermarket converters and nobody really was doing a great job at it from the installer's point of view. And basically they used to have these universal converters and 50 kits to make it fit and the installer really wanted a direct fit converter. So we, um, we started making catalytic converters uh, and the company was called um, Catco. And uh, Catco was for cat catalytic converters, what it was, uh, how we started it. And really from there, we grew, uh, we grew the catalytic converter business we sold the muffler shops to our employees. And um, in 1998, uh, knocking on all the doors from about 92 to 98 and looking at the installer level, they were looking for the right muffler shop programs for muffler manufacturers. So um, AP was a billion dollar company that sold the OEM side to Forasia. And we bought the aftermarket in Goldsboro, North Carolina. So we basically, uh, I moved to North Carolina in 98, my brother ran uh, Catco and uh, combined, we just grew the business to um, basically 2014. My brothers were, got a lot older and wanted to retire. And I wanted to stay working a little bit. So we, we sold to um, a PE firm, which then I stayed on board for a little bit. And then from there, we um, the PE firms did a consolidation with the brake business and became APC. And um, 
the tax came in on um, imports because the freight business was importing everything. So the duties kind of killed it hard and precious metals went through the roof on the catalyst side and the timing wasn't right. And uh, the, comp the PE firms decided to, uh, to exit and basically um, the companies were, were left, left to be sold and we, are, we loved the company, so we ended up buying it back. And that was what month and what year, Vange? That was in September of 2014. I'm sorry, we sold January of 2014. We bought back September of 2020. Terrific. So about a year or so ago. Yes, a year ago. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's a terrific story, Vange. Congratulations on the, uh, the buyback. I bet it feels good to have your baby back. Basically, it feels really good. It, um, the people um, have uh, really uh, come out and helped us in every aspect to become uh, a good company and given them what they need to service their product and their customers and also for our employees to, uh, to have a, a better quality of life. Terrific. Vange, I suspect I know the answer to this, but I'll ask you anyways. If you could go back and do it all again, is there anything you might do differently or change? Well, I'm sure human nature says you could always do things better and different and all that. But I think a lot of things are in time. When you look back, you say I could have done, should have done, or all that. But I think, I think at the end of the day, I don't know that I would change much because there's a lot of things that were not up to me. There, some of our success and our family success and the business success was by other people. It was by customers. It was by employees. It was by vendors. It was a lot of people that made a difference in life. So you'd have to change some of all of it, not just what our decision was. So Vange, looking forward, you've owned the company back for a year now. We're at the end of 2021. What, is the, what does the future look like? What's the vision for AP moving forward? Well, I, I think we always look at many things, but our whole goal has always been to understand what our customers want and need and how do we help them get to their wants and needs. And by doing that, our company becomes successful because they buy more products and we make more products and our people work harder. And, and that's how we, we look at it. We don't look at it that the business is gonna radically change. I think as our customers grow, as our potential customers that we uh, we get to come work with us, uh, that's how we grow our business. Well, I know you have a great reputation out there, Vange. So let me ask you, Vange, would you prefer to be a technician today with all of the high-tech advancements or have been a technician on the vehicles 30 years ago? Or perhaps both? Yeah, it, it, it's really interesting because the two are not in common, but yet they are, right? Right. You know, in, in the old days, you did everything with the ranch. Today, you do it with a computer, <laughs> you know, but you still use a ranch to change the parts. So I think that your mechanic today is different than the days we were there. You know, I think... In our old days, we rebuilt engines in 50, 60,000 miles. Today, we don't really rebuild engines at all. So the quality of, of the product and the cars is substantially better and it's completely different. I think mechanics today have a lot more respect in the industry and 
and get pat, paid substantially better than we did in the old days. Uh, a lot of, lot of uh, news today, a lot of uh, media talking about electric vehicles. Uh, we just came out of Vegas, more talk about EVs, etc. What's your general view? Is the aftermarket prepared? When should it be prepared? What are your thoughts? I don't know that I have a gigantic thought about it, but all I can tell you about an electric car is it's an expensive car today. So not many people can buy it. You know, when you start looking at $70,000, the second thing is when you look at people today, they want instant gratification. So if you have an electric car and you need to recharge it, you got to spend an hour to get it recharged. It's a whole different ball game, right? So there's so many things that are involved in that process, but in my mind, uh, I am sure that this industry will adjust to whatever comes. You know, when we, 30 years ago, there weren't gonna be any mufflers installed because stainless steel came in effect. But catalytic converters came with it and that became. Today, you look at every car and every car has two mufflers on it, not one. You know, every car you pull in front of you has two mufflers. So, so I think that we're a long way from seeing a radical change in the market. I just don't see a drop going from X amount of gasoline to nothing. Second is, you know, we talk about emissions, but today's cars, when you get to the hybrids and you get the smaller engines and new technologies, you know, our emissions are pretty low. So does hydrogen take effect? I think it'll be interesting what transpires, but I, I couldn't be the one to guess what will happen. Well, history has proven the automotive aftermarket always adjusts. Absolutely. So, Vance, a few kind of personal questions. Being a tech by trade, when you started your career, I guess you've had some pretty cool cars over the years. What was your first car? <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting question, Bill. But I think we... We were never into the nicest car in the world because we got in the business to make a living and it wasn't like a hobby, right? So today we have sports cars and we buy all those things. But in those days, my first car was 66 Chevy Impala. What color? Red. Mine was a 1976 used Ford Pinto wagon with oh, a wow. with the wood fake wood siding on the on the side of it well bill you just we just aged ourselves i'm about 10 years older than you <laughs> yeah i guess so <laughs> uh so as you think about your career kind of from a uh personal standpoint vange any game changing moments any flash points that come to mind that 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 stand out as you reflect back? I think, I think there's many, many of those instances. I, I think in our career, changing from an installer to a manufacturer and, and moving to different products and growing, I, I think there were a lot of changes in our life and some of the best were because of people people helped us get from one level to the next there were so many people that made a difference in our lives you know i i think when when i look at customers that took a risk on us when we were basically non-essential in any aspect of value in the marketplace when we look at vendors that took risks on us to to grow our business you know, there, there are so many people that did that. Terrific. You know, in this industry, Vange, and you, you just touched on it, we talk a lot about how great the people are in the marketplace. And you've known a lot of great people as, as I. 
Are there any memorable words of wisdom or mentors in the aftermarket in particular who made a large impression on you? There were a lot of people that, that made a big impression on me. And, and, and I want to make sure that I don't miss people, but you know, two of, two of the people that made a difference, one from a vendor and one from a customer, um, Dave Karachi, that we both know, uh, was working for Roll at the time. And when I bought AP in 1998, he came in and I wanted to see what he thought I would do and, and all that. And, and um, he said to me, well, you know, the only way you're going to work in a big company is you got to learn how to delegate. And I never forgot that because I think it's, Sometimes we think we're really smart and can do everything, and we really can't. On the customer level, um, Art Fisher was a great educator. You know, I mean, Art uh, taught me many things. You know, he took the time, understood I was young and dumb, and 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 taught me many things from his perspective, from the customer's perspective of understanding the things. So I think Art was a great guy did a great job with his son and Bo is doing a great job with his grandkids and many others. On the vendor side, there was a guy named Dick Kernelson that, uh, may he rest in peace, great guy, uh, but took me under his arm and showed me what manufacturing is all about, what makes the difference. And everybody always thinks it's machines and it's all that. It's, it's all about people. So all three people taught me that it's all about people. So uh, it has been a great, um, great success in the respect of uh, people taking the time to understand that I wasn't smart enough to uh, to see at their point, their way and, and help me along. That's great. Vange, as we seemingly and hopefully are coming out of the COVID 19 pandemic. Are there any takeaways for you personally or your business or both uh, that you are going to take forward under the headline of lessons learned in this situation we all found ourselves in? Oh, I think I think there's many there's many lessons personally and professionally and some I see it basically one and the same because uh, personally, uh, my business I take personal and all the people that I deal with uh, are personal. So, so it, it makes it easy to, uh, it's, it's, or it makes it hard to separate the two. I, I think COVID taught us one thing that we need to look at that could be no tomorrow. You could really get sick and it affects you. Uh, I think it changed us in the respect of supporting each other. It took the time for us to uh, to understand the other guy's family problems and those, whether it was work or whatever, that they needed to take care of their family members. So I, I think at the end of the day, we're better because of it. I think there was a lot of time to think about different things and there was, there was come time to come back and, and try to protect each other and every aspect. Those are great points. So Van, you're known as a longtime industry advocate. You've served on the board of directors, AASA, MEMA, MECA, and you're past chairman of, of AASA. In your opinion, are there any issues you feel aftermarket leaders and business owners should keep, be keeping an eye on in a special way right now? I think, I think the number one in my, my point of view is we need to bring the young, gen, young generation forward and, and help them succeed and have them understand that they, if they can think it, they can see it, they can get it. That's one. Second is the right to repair to protect the industry as a total to have the independence keep growing and becoming bigger. Yeah, those are two important issues. And I know that uh, 
at the show, there's a lot of, I think, productive conversation around those issues too. So Vans, you've, you've, you've been in the industry for an extended period. You've traveled a lot. Any special memories from the road uh, at an industry event that stand out? Uh, there's many, Bill, but at the end of the day, this industry is a phenomenal industry. There's great people. And the only thing that I can tell you is that I never saw it as going to work. I always saw it as I'm going to meet my friends. And the industry has been that good to us. And I know you have a lot of friends in the industry. So Vance, last question for you. What do you like to do for fun when you're not running AP? Well, I, I play a little golf. It's, it, it's somewhat um, stressful, mentally stressful, because it's hard to accept the smaller the number, the better. <laughs> but Coming from a true manufacturing guy. Yeah, so, but, but it, I, I love golf. I love to play. Uh, again, it's all about people and... Uh, Love the beach and uh, relax a little bit. Love my grandkids and uh, I want to do everything I can so they can they can punish my kids. You know, so it's a payback, right? So, so I'm working on that. I think at the end of the day, this is a wonderful industry. It's all about the people, and. The rest is just a process. It's product, it's delivery, it's all those things, but it's all about the people. That's the only thing I can say. Vange, thank you so much for joining us on AMN Drive Time. Thanks, Bill. I appreciate you taking the time. And great job, you have great staff. I, I cannot tell you how impressed I am with people uh, that recognized me that I didn't know them that stopped and said, Hey, here's who we are. And it was, it was great to see everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. This podcast is sponsored by Lightens. Lightens, your best source for OE quality automotive and heavy duty accessory drive tensioning devices. We know tensioners because we invented them. Well, I, I think we always look at many things, but our whole goal has always been to understand what our customers want and need and how do we help them get to their wants and needs. And by doing that, our company becomes successful because they buy more products and 